Hi. Welcome to QSIS Control Quick Starts. I'm still Jeff Perkins. This is still Deep Lua, Tables, Arrays, and the Loops. Oh my. And this happens to be the exciting conclusion of our mini series on these Deep Lua topics. This one is called Oh My, and my best George Takei, because well, I'm going to teach you something that's really, really fantastic. We have a function called components.getComponents. And what it does is it returns a table of name components in your design into your script. With that, we can build dynamic and scalable code. The big idea is that in Lua, the more you look around, the more you will see tables everywhere because they're everywhere. Let's dig in and learn some really, really cool deep Lua magic here in QSIS. So let's click this off, click, and let's look here. So the big idea, as we looked into this particular corner, advanced applications, um, imagine that in your, maybe you have a design and you have multiple cameras. Here they are, cameras uh, one, two, and three. And you will notice that I have given them code names. I'm not gonna show you that again. You, you've already seen how to make named components. So I have named camera one, two, and three. I also have named my, uh, my TSC here. What we want to do, and I'm gonna show you the groundwork for something is maybe we have uh, the desire to put a combo box on our touch panel. And the thing we want this combo box to do is actually have a list of the names of the cameras in the system, because maybe we're gonna write uh, some PTZ preset recalls. Maybe, maybe we'll do that again soon. But the big idea here is, wouldn't it be kind of cool if our script could just ask the design itself, Hey, uh, QSIS, um, what cameras are in my system so that I might control them? It would be really cool if QSIS could just tell us, uh, these are the cameras in your system. And we could just use that automatic ask to parse out all of that information and make our own uh, array of choices to go into the choices of this combo box. That'd be pretty slick. In fact, let's do it. I'm gonna click the pencil. And when I click the pencil, that opens the editor window. And here we are, here's our framework. We're gonna walk our way through it. We're gonna scaffold our way towards that conclusion of populating the combo box with the list of cameras in our system. So the first thing that I'm going to do here in line one is I have declared uh, table components and I have set it to be the output of component.get components. I mean, right off the bat, here's the secret sauce. Component.get components is a function, and what it does is it queries your designer file to bring back to you a list of all of the discoverable components. Now, discoverable. Discoverable means you have to have made it a named component and given it script access. If you don't do that, it won't show up. So don't be mad at me if it doesn't show up. Also, don't be mad at me if you give it a name and you don't give it script access. How do I know? Because it's happened to me. So be ready, give it both a name and make sure it has script access. Otherwise you're gonna bang your head on the wall. Okay, additionally, uh, we know that combo boxes take arrays uh, as into their dot choices on their control tree. So here we are, table of cameras is our table that we're going to populate. But, but let's start uh, on our journey of figuring out how this thing works by just turning this little piece of code on. Let's run a pairs loop on the table of components and see what we get. When we hit go, we will see, oh, hey, look, we got one, two, three, four things. Um, meaning um, we found four components in our design. Now, so technically what, what was provided back for us? 
It's technically an array. Why is it an array? It's because its keys are sequential integers starting at one and there's no holes and it works great. So keys one, two, three, four have values of tables. Oh man, but I want to know what those tables say. Well, back in video number two in our mini series, I showed you how we could actually traverse uh, tables inside of tables. We're gonna make that same move here. I'm gonna clear that out and I'm going to turn this second piece of code on. So here we are, 11 through 16 are now operating. This is the code that's gonna help us to traverse the outer table and the inner tables. Now, we already saw a second ago that everything we get uh, from the outer table are just inner tables. So I'm not gonna print it all out again. You can turn on line 12 if you want to, but I'm not. Uh, let's hit go. And when we go, oh boy, we get a bunch of information. But uh, we have to read it a little bit and start sorting it out for ourselves. But again, this is how real coding works. You start to unravel things to see how they work under the hood so that you can do cool and clever things with them. So let's read what we actually found. So we found that key number one, again, has tables. And what are the keys on their tables? Well, controls, control source, type, name, properties, ID, and then we move on to the second one. Cool. So what are we finding down here? Well, we are finding that, oh, uh, we have, right, if we look at the type key, we'll see that we have a value that tells us, oh, this is a camera. And in fact, the name of that camera is camera one, i.e. the code name of that camera is camera one. That's really useful information to know. Uh, as we keep looking, we see that, oh, two, uh, sorry, two, uh, the type of two is, oh, it's also a camera and it's camera two. And the type of three is a camera and its code name is camera three. And in fact, uh, we, uh, number four, where is it? Down here, its type is a touch screen. Oh, neat. Okay, so we found the three cameras and the one touch screen. Cool, but I only want a list I only want to populate my combo box with the cameras. Um, I don't really, I don't care about the touch panel in this particular instance. I just want a list of the cameras. We can keep working on this. Let's turn off this code and let's turn on this code, clear this out because we've already seen, right? The whole mess of information that comes out of it Let's make one more right scaffolded attempt at sorting this out. What we're going to do, line 20 is going to run a pairs loop on the table of components. That's the outer table. We're then going to run a pairs loop on those inner tables, right? Those are the values in the outer table. Okay, so remember outer table, inner table. We're going to run through those inner tables. And we're gonna do kind of that same move we looked at in the other video of we're gonna to look to see in the inner table if the V that we find is a camera, right? If it's a PTZ, then we're gonna use table.insert. What's table.insert, Jeff? That's a great question. Uh, hit F1 and let the help file open and you type in table.insert and you can read all about it, okay? But I'll tell you about how this one works. This one takes two arguments. It takes uh, a table that you want to write into and then what value do you want to write into that table? And what it builds for me is an array of the values, which is fantastic. This is exactly what I want. So what is the value that I want to shove into this array that I'm populating? And the array's name is table cameras, it's okay. Um, 
What's the value? Well, let's let's sort that out. Notice how we I've been extra explicit here, right? Um, extra explicit as to the value that we're writing into that array called table of cameras. We are going to be looking in the table of components at the particular key in our pairs loop on the table of components, and then at the key called name. Because remember what was at the name key? The code name is the value there. So that's going to, we're traversing multi-dimensional arrays in building our own array. This is really, really cool. So what do we get? Uh, we get uh, whatever that code name is, because that's the value that's at this um, part of the table and we write it into the table of cameras, and then to prove to ourselves that we did it, um, we're going to just print out to ourselves here in the debug window, and then uh, we can go and look at our combo box. In fact, uh, we will split that screen for a second and shimmy this all the way over and shimmy that over, uh, because I really like doing this. Look, my combo box is sad. It's a sad, sad, empty combo box. Oh, the horror. Okay, um, as soon as I hit go, ding, go. What did we do? We ran through the table of, com of components. We ran through all of those uh, tables, which was inside the outer table. And when we found, uh, if we found uh, a PTZ, then we took its code name, right, which is located at table of components, bracket key, bracket name, and we wrote it into the table of cameras, line 29 through 30 run, we print them out, table of cameras one, two, and three is camera one, two, and three, and now our sad empty combo box is not sad or empty anymore. We have that information that we need. So where do we go from here? Well, you can take it a number of places. Uh, where we might take it in the future is we might take this array, this table of cameras uh, that has the code names and we might go ahead and build um, an array of named components out of those. And then from there, we might go ahead and build press and hold presets for PTZ cameras. That would be kind of cool that automatically queries the design and figures out what cameras are out there and then starts writing PTZ presets for them. That's a thing. Not today though. We're not doing that today because today we're done. In fact, we're done with this whole mini series. But what was the point of today's exercise? Today's video, let's close that, let's open this. We did something that was very, very cool. Uh, we leveraged, Cusis's use of tables really in one of the slickest ways possible. Uh, we queried the entire design using components that get components to get a list of all of the components that were discoverable in the design. And then we did custom parsing of that table to get the actual information that we wanted, which we're going to use to do other cool, interesting things with later. It's automagical. It's really, really cool. Uh, and now you know how to do it as well. So the big idea in QSIS, in Lua, as you look around, it's all tables. It's all tables. In fact, the more you look around, the more you'll be like, that's a table, isn't it? It is. It's because it's a table. It's a table. With that, I really hope that you've had a great time. Uh, I've had a great time making these videos. And I hope to see you again very, very soon. Good day.